Tokyo Electric Power Company is ready to inject nitrogen into the containment vessel of the number two reactor at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant to prevent hydrogen blasts. Work is underway at the plant to decontaminate water and inject it back into the reactor for cooling. But if the reactor is cooled to a stable level, less moisture will be produced, raising the ratio of hydrogen in the air. Hydrogen can cause an explosion when it reacts with oxygen. TEPCO has been pumping nitrogen into the number one reactor since April and has completed preparations to do the same at the number two reactor. The utility assessed the possible effects of injecting nitrogen into the number two reactor and submitted its report to the government's nuclear and industrial safety agency on Friday. At a news conference on Saturday, the company said it plans to monitor radiation levels around the compound more closely as the nitrogen may force out tiny amounts of gas containing radioactive substances. Tiny amounts of gas containing radioactive substances. Tiny amounts of gas containing radioactive substances. We will start the injection as soon as we obtain the consent of the agency. Thanks for joining us. Do they have control of the situation at the site? No. It's still a ticking time bomb. Realize that after the big Sumatra tsunami, mm -hmm. uh, 90 days after, three months after that, there was a huge aftershock. If they have another aftershock, and they're not in cold shutdown yet till next year, the accident could start all over again. It's like hanging by your fingernails. Yeah, it's stable, but you're hanging by your fingernails. Americans think this crisis is over, or that some even think that maybe it's solved or it's contained. It's, it's not. We're, what's happening right now? In the last two weeks, everything we knew about that accident has been turned upside down. We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Radiation, minimal that was released. Now we know it was comparable to the radiation at Chernobyl. And as far as evacuation, yeah, 12 miles, that's it. You don't have to evacuate beyond 12 miles. Now they find hot spots, four hot spots outside the evacuation zone. 34,000 school children now have radiation badges when they go to Kindergartners school. Kindergartners with radiation badges. Down to badges. four years of age. Can you imagine that? Kindergarten kids with radiation badges going to school. So all the mythology of the accident has been turned upside down because utility has finally fessed up to how severe this accident really was. In your view, did they not know how bad it was or they knew and they didn't tell or they just were completely blown away by the scope of the disaster? I'm a physicist and we tried to reconstruct the accident in our computers given the feeble amount of information they gave us. We knew it was much more severe than they were saying because radiation was coming out left and right. So in other words, they lied to us. They knew how much radiation was coming out. They knew the danger. They knew how much core melting was taking place. But they tried to put a happy face on it. As a reporter, within hours of the earthquake and tsunami, within hours, not even a day, there were already statements from the company and from the International Atomic Energy uh, Association saying that there had been safe shutdown of all of the reactors. And we know, of course, in the end, that that simply wasn't true. But from the very beginning, they were trying to tell us that this was a safe situation. Within hours of the accident, we now know it was like the Keystone Cops. People that are clueless, headless, just running around crazy, not knowing what to do. We can now reconstruct that accident minute by minute, hour by hour, and we can see this chaos that erupted in the leadership of the utility. What's happening to the people who are working there now? Well, as you know, workers are being sent in and they're getting, uh, you know, like a year's dose of radiation just within like 10 minutes at a time. At Chernobyl, 600,000 workers had to be mobilized, each one going in just for a few minutes, each one getting a medal from Gorbachev. This will be the 100-year cleanup. How, how long will it take to clean this up, in your view? 50 to 100 years. And we're uh, not there yet. We're not to the point of talking about the cleanup yet because they haven't stopped the reaction. It's, it's still happening. Cleanup hasn't even started yet. They're not in cold shutdown till next year. Cold shutdown is when boiling stops. Right. It's boiling water right there at the reactor, releasing radiation to the environment and releasing radiation into gigantic vats. How are they storing and disposing of this stuff? That's the killer because they have all these vats that are filling up now. They may have to dump it into the ocean again. At that point, the Chinese, the Koreans, the fishermen, they get up all in arms because there's so much damage that every time you put water in, it leaks right out again, highly radioactive, and it's filling up at the site now. So what do they do with it? 
Right now, they're just uh, counting the number of gallons as they pile up, desperately trying to bring more vats in. But uh, once they saturate, they're going to have to dump. And well, at that point, it's another crisis. Let's talk about the radiation in the environment, in the atmosphere. We've been told that it would be measurable but minuscule amounts on the U.S. West Coast, around the world. Is that true? It's still minimal around the world. Most of the damage is concentrated within 20 miles, 50 miles of the reactor accident itself. That's where we have the hot spots. That's where we have 20 times normal amount of radiation in schoolyards outside the evacuation zone. But in New York City, you can actually see it in the milk. You can actually see that iodine-131 actually spiked a little bit in our milk in New York City, but it's very small. Just even hearing that, though, I mean, even hearing that you can detect it, that there's a, a catastrophe that is wor the worst catastrophe, industrial catastrophe in history, that we can see it in milk in New York, that's frightening. That's right. This could be the granddaddy of all industrial accidents, topping Chernobyl at $200 billion, topping the Gulf oil spill at about $15 billion, topping the Challenger Columbia disasters in space at about $10 billion. This could be the, the world's record holder for an industrial accident. How many... Hi everybody from beforeitsnews.com. Spent fuel storage at Nebraska nuke plant now submerged by floodwaters. Earlier this month, workers at the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant surrounded the reactor and other key parts of the facility with a massive water boom called an aqua dam. Fort Calhoun had a foot deep pool next to the reactor for spent fuel rods. The pool was so full in 2009 that they were sealing the fuel rods up in dry casts and sticking them in an on-site mausoleum. This, of course, is why there is a no-fly zone around the plant. Someone might realize that wherever the fuel casks and underground fuel pools are, they are not inside the condom. Wow! Calhoun stores its spent fuel in ground level pools, which are underwater anyway, but they are open at the top. When the Missouri River pours in there, it's going to make Fukushima look like an x-ray. The fuel is all sitting outside the reactor, waiting to wash away or explode, which will destroy about 15,000 square miles of what used to be the Corn Belt. So if you haven't got your cornmeal yet, you better go out and get a bag because the price is going to go through the roof. That goes for all kinds of corn. Hat tip and bow to Arthur Hugh for finding the dry storage bunker half submerged outside the condom. It's the smaller brown building adjacent to the white tank. No one really knows what their condition is or even if the spent fuel is still on site. No one in the major media is asking the question, and the operators aren't saying. The dry storage bunker is half submerged outside the Aquadam condom. It's the smaller brown building adjacent to the white tank at the right of this picture. So who made the dry storage cask containers at Fort Calhoun? That would be Transnuclear Inc. Who owns Transnuclear? Arriva. And what else is Arriva doing? Selling water purification tanks and systems to TEPCO for Fukushima. What else does Arriva do? Anything it wants, since it's a giant multinational behemoth. Here are a couple close-up pics of the aqua dams at Fort Calhoun.
This is Traders Beware. I'll post a link to this article below. Hello YouTube, this is Churchman here. I'm just going to do a brief little demonstration. I'm new to the whole Geiger counter thing, but uh, I purchased a very good unit here. Uh, it's a Ludlum 3A with a very special probe, the pancake probe. And uh, what I would tell you uh, is that it's set to the lowest setting. It's actually the most sensitive setting. You can see the needles moving, but this is not high levels of radiation. But just in case anybody thinks that we're not getting uh, radiation in the uh, rain, I just took a little sampling on a tissue paper off of my car, and I'm sort of uh, reproducing what uh, Poterblog has um, has done on his videos, and it turns out it's real. It's very real. Watch this. That's the alarm. Back to normal. It's not clicking as much. Needle's not in the red. Here it goes again. Maybe not a big difference. But imagine this in your food all the time. Now this is off a car, obviously, but uh, it just rained. Uh, but imagine every day that uh, this is coming down into the, um, into the food as it's growing, and the cows are licking it up. Yeah, it's something to think about. Now I'm going to set it to a normal setting. Okay, you see the needle doesn't move anywhere near as much. This would be normal background radiation for every day. Now watch what happens. The alarm probably won't go off, but you can see the difference right away. Counts per minute increases incredibly. Okay, that's pretty much it. This tells you that we are getting radiation in the troposphere. It's coming down in the rainfall. And that's why I tell everybody to stay out of the rain. Something to think about, folks. That's it. Have a great day. Much love.